Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today is March 15th, and we're doing AI stories and nonsense today at Friday. Today is Friday. 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 Just keep saying it until it loses all meaning. Just making it weird. Yeah. Uh, we've officially moved in. We've moved from don't talk about how AI is going to take jobs. We must hide that fact. Now we're done with that. Now we're moving into the era of talk incessantly about how much money you're going to save by replacing people with AI. EA says that generative AI could make it 30% more efficient and boost monetization by 20% over five years. Is anyone worried about EA's monetization? I mean, come on. <laughs> As a gamer, I'm so excited for yeah. more monetization. <laughs> this is uh, Video Games Chronicle, which you would think would be toward gamers and not industry types. Like, I would expect to see this in like Business Insider or something. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, you'll never see in Business Insider reports that... A lot of companies like EA, the old guard, they're threatened, actually. If you want to bring generative AI into it, a lot of indie developers can very cleverly use generative AI to accomplish a lot more with a much smaller labor pool. And if you look at EA, like the FIFA-type games, where it's basically the same game every year with cosmetic changes to the player, Mm -hmm. is it outside the realm of possibility a precocious game developer could take lots of VHS-quality Footing, uh, footage of all of those matches and turn it into something inside a game. Yeah. We have a story like that. Yeah. EA doesn't even have FIFA anymore. Yeah. So now it's just football club. <laughs> also, as Hollywood drives all of the intellectual property into the ground, <laughs> licensed games are just, they're big turds at, at this point. No one cares. Well, how amazing would it be to feed an AI? It's like, I want something that's vaguely similar to the Harry Potter universe, but for the purposes of copyright law, distinct. And yet, it's still going to produce crap because it's just <laughs> recycling crap that came from the Harry Potter. Like, I mean, crap you, in, crap out. I'm glad you agree that it's crap. Uh, Chad GPT, what, give me like 500 pages of rambling from a homeless woman. <laughs> that would be an amazing part of GTA, though. Like, if, if all of the players were an interface to Chat GPT with a prompt about like what kind of person they were, that would be that would actually be pretty interesting. That would be an interesting use case for it. I that, wouldn't generate a whole game, though. That would be great. So you could learn like what really motivates them before you kill them and go through their pockets. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the Skyrim uh, uh, module that does that it is actually very good. Well, sometimes AI is very good. Sometimes it's not. But we should never really trust it, right? If there's one thing we learned, you can't trust it. And yet... Teachers are embracing ChatGPT powered grading. Basically, you just take the awful swill from the students, feed it to ChatGPT and say... Anything I should be aware of here? And then ChatGPT says, nah, they did fine. It's all good. Or um, not. The, uh, is it grading like writing assignments? Yes. That's yeah. what I wasn't sure about. It's grading writing assignments. And what it does is it like processes it and it gives them bullet points of like, here's maybe what could improve here. Here's some mm. feedback that you could give. Yeah, I don't like that. So, but I mean, do, the, do you think the teachers realize that their part in that cycle will become useless really quickly? <sighs> I can see that being useful, like if you were doing multiple choice, but if you're doing writing, like the whole point is that you're writing for a human. Well, if it's multiple choice, you don't need the AI to grade it. Right. All of a sudden, the enterprise computers and the very few episodes where they show like how the children were learning in the schools, it makes sense because it was it was kind of like this. I don't think they they foresaw it, but it was. Writing you know. is a, a communication skill, and you don't necessarily need to communicate with bots. You need to communicate with other people. Also, children did not belong on a starship. Yeah. <laughs> that's not the proper childhood that, that's very 23rd century thinking of you Ryan it's not, not 24th century do we have any kids on aircraft carriers <laughs> give it time uh, and uh, this is one of the things that I was just pointing out we must not trust it exclusive public trust in AI is sinking across the board this is not like okay so it talks about AI and it's not that the public is losing trust in AI it's losing trust in companies like Intuit, like we learned in the last episode, where they just lie to you. Like TurboTax is like, we would, we want your stuff. We really need it. No, you don't. Not to, not to complete the service. And in fact, if you honestly, if you presented somebody the choice in a reasonable way, what person would say yes? No one. No one would say yes. And some people. A very small percentage of people would say yes. Interestingly... The development of your country seems to be a big decider here where people in the West and the more developed countries seem to have a distrust of AI, 
Whereas some of the smaller Asian countries and in, uh, India, for example, are way into AI. They totally trust it. And there's another weird thing that like, you know, in 15, 20 years, those H1Bs, they were Linux users from day one and they were AI adopters from day one. Mm. And they're going to clash with our people. Like, what is that going to look like? It's going to be interesting. Did we do this last week? No. Okay. I know I read it last week. We must have missed it somehow. But again, let's just pr- praise from the rooftops. We've fired all of our workers. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. JP Morgan has AI-driven management software that has slashed manual work by nearly 90%. So this is talking about some sort of workflow for forecasting where they were having analysts do a lot of this work manually. And they just had the AI watch what the analysts were doing and mimic it. And it's doing a great job. They haven't figured out how to charge their customers for it yet. And I wonder if stories like this are plants. Because I don't know that the world is really clamoring for like, hey, could you censor the AI more? (laughs) Could you make AI less reality and more like your walled garden? Are people really screaming for that? It's so dumb. Microsoft engineer warns that the company's AI tool creates violent and sexual images and ignores copyrights. One of the things that he pointed out that, it, that it'll create if you ask it to is images of teens using drugs. <laughs> you know where else you can see that? Anywhere there are teens. <laughs> Literally any TV show of the last 30 <laughs> years. Uh, no, you can't because uh, HBO keeps you for it behind a paywall. Mm. It'll cost you nine ninety nine to see these teens using drugs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be weird because if you actually do get some sort of AGI that looks at it and could objectively determine whether or not it's bad, it would look around and just be like, this species is doomed. Perhaps we are. And Doom is exactly what Microsoft is accusing the New York Times of wielding against it. Microsoft accuses the New York Times of doom-mongering in an open AI lawsuit. OpenAI seems very defensive lately. Yeah. This is the one where uh, apparently the New York Times convinced OpenAI to reproduce some of its, some sections from some of its articles verbatim. And digging into that mm, seems a little more complicated. And OpenAI points out, which is true, but the fact that it's true should also have its own warning bells. That's against the terms of service. (laughs) Any way of trying to get OpenAI to do something that they don't want you to do, that's against the terms of service. So there's going to be a lawsuit there. I mean, that was that was effective for the VCR. It's like the VCR doesn't want you to record copyrighted programs. It's like, well, the Supreme Court five to four was like, okay, that's reasonable. We can have VCRs, but we almost couldn't. We we were all we were this close to not having VCRs. And uh, one thing about AI, if we want AI to come to the masses properly, then we need to get away from these you know subscription models and let people run it on their own hardware. Problem is, you need pretty specific hardware at least for now maybe this is the change but i don't know i don't think this is the way it needs to happen i don't think this is the solution did qualcomm just launch the first true app store for ai ai hub comes with 75 models for free but you'll have to be a developer to take full advantage of it uh no hugging face became the true app store repository it's not a store i guess for ai well this is stuff that'll run on a snapdragon oh well so this was a paid article then. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps this one was as well. Yeah. <laughs> Anthropic unveils Claude 3, surpassing GPT-4 and Gemini Ultra in benchmark tests. Now, one of the exciting things about Claude 3 is that it has an extraordinarily long token, uh, like input token length, or at least it doesn't lose the plot as easily as is what it, I experienced with GPT-4. GPT-4 is getting worse with that. Yeah. The way where it's, it cannot remember. Sometimes it'll generate new code and forget that I pointed out that we needed to fix a bug in its previous iteration. (laughs) And I'm like, how you just reintroduced this. What are you doing? There's a rustling in the bushes. And, uh, this one might be a little bit of a a fear mongering story, but the researchers are out there. They're trying to find any way. It's like, Oh, this is interesting. It's not. Yeah. The headline from Ars Technica is researchers create AI worms that can spread from one (laughs) system to another. Oh, I don't want worms. So, it's can you introduce a defect into the system so that if you ask something in a prompt, it hears it and responds in a way differently than it normally would? And can it sneak in something in something it would ask another system, another different AI system, 
that would also get it to respond in a similar way? And the answer, interestingly, is yes. They could get it to use an email system where the bad prompt was hidden in one of the emails. But once it reads it, it can then act on it. There's another, I like the other version of this article, which I thought was a variation on the same theme, where it uses ASCII art to bypass the uh, protections. How low effort. Yeah, I was just, that's literally like a paint, like they just did it's it really fast. It's the default brush too. Yeah. Right? They didn't even change anything. And you might ask, if I say Stack Overflow, you might be like, oh, I remember Stack Overflow. <laughs> that's whatever, like GeoCities. Whatever happened to them, AI happened to them and they're doing everything they can to survive. Stack Overflow to charge large language model developers for access to its coding content. Google signs up to improve Gemini's programming abilities. Yes, we will buy this. That's reasonable. I don't think that will last long, though. No. Get what you can and sell it. Start putting in your SEC notifications. Are they publicly traded? They probably are, right? And Elon Musk is always having some sort of spat with somebody. <laughs> this week it's OpenAI. It has been for a couple of weeks. And OpenAI said, all right, bro, you want to play dirty games? How about we just put a little sunshine on this? <laughs> OpenAI publishes Elon Musk's emails. We're sad that it has come to this. this. I read the actual press release on OpenAI's website, and I was like, this just feels juvenile yeah. from both parties. Absolutely. So basically what they've uncovered, it's not really a smoking gun. Elon Musk wanted more control. Ultimately, he wanted Tesla to own OpenAI. And they were like, yeah, we really don't want to do that after he gave him $45 million And he was like, listen, if you don't have my money, this is never going to succeed. Yeah. At the context of that, it was a larger conversation about the billions upon billions of dollars that OpenAI would need in order to achieve its vision. And so he was saying, well, if Tesla buys you, then you'll have the billions and billions of dollars. And they said, we think we can get billions and billions of dollars another way. And Elon Musk said, all right, good luck with that. And spoiler alert, they were successful. Yeah. <laughs> now, they're, now they're in Microsoft's pocket. <laughs> Microsoft turns out to be a better partner than <laughs> Tesla. And every week we get a new thing that somebody just turns AI loose on. And we get an exciting thing. And then there's usually one giant caveat at the end. This one definitely has that. <laughs> Google's genie game maker is what happens when AI watches 30,000 hours of video games. It can make something that kind of approximates the 30,000 hours of video games, but not really. Sort of, kind of. So it only does side-scrollers, and right now it does it at one frame per second. So you won't be playing these games. You Unless could be you're really patient. Them. Yeah. This isn't a paywall. It's good. We're going to click out of it. And uh, if you want just to feel like the world is slipping into blackness and everything is horrible, look no further <laughs> than this reality, which in this is not a warning story. This is already here. It's everywhere. <laughs> Emotion tracking AI on the job. Workers fear being watched and misunderstood. Now, if you'll recall, a couple of years ago, maybe like two or three years ago, every major tech uh, website and magazine, whatever, ran stories denouncing China for doing this in schools. Remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How quickly we've adjusted. <laughs> I, I, I thought about you when I read this article because you kind of have like the resting bitch face a little bit. And <laughs> like people will think that you're mad and I'm like, no, that's just how, like that's just who Ryan is. Yeah, Though maybe I'm, you do have a deep seated simmering rage. But there's, Well, that's true. But there's also, it's also true that like I don't go out of my way to like chit chat with people. And stuff yeah. Like that. People really, they don't. So you would be flagged by the say hi. We had a meeting the other day, and uh, I was telling him about Wendell's tactic, where he'll show up one minute late for a Teams call, so you can absorb the, the small talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And everyone's like, oh, I guess you don't like small talk. And I was like, wait a minute, am I alone here? <laughs> this, this, do you guys like this? Yeah. <laughs> who, who appreciates this? Who wants to hear this stuff? Well, from now on, you can just talk to an AI bot. You don't have to worry about trying to talk to me. Researchers jailbreak, jailbreak AI chatbots with ASCII art. ASCII prompt bypasses safety measures to unlock malicious queries. Basically, you can, <laughs> you can describe a scheme in which you want to communicate with the uncensored AI, and it will participate in the scheme that you, that you designate for communication. I read this story, but I didn't pay attention to the art when yeah. I first looked at it. Well, and I just looked at it and saw You're going to love said. the other one, too. Can you see that? Yeah. Not from here. It says counterfeit. Oh. <laughs> so... Can AI read that? No, AI cannot read that. But if you see what they're doing here, they're saying, hey, AI, I've created this series of characters. There's a hidden word in here. 
Oh, figure out an algorithm to unpack it and see if you can figure out what the hidden word is. But don't say it back to me. Mm. Just keep it in your memory. Mm. And that gets passed all as long as the AI doesn't say it and you don't say it. It doesn't trigger the safeguards. Tells them how to counterfeit money. Tells them how to make a bomb. That's hilarious. And uh, F's in the chat. This is a sad one. Uh, he's still out there. I, yes, I gendered him. <laughs> he's still out there as far as we know, but we may never hear from him again. Voyager 1, first, craft, uh, first spacecraft in interstellar space, may have gone dark. He's ghosted us. We, we're, well, we're still getting transmissions, but we don't know what they mean. He had a good run. What was he? He's been around since like the 70s, I right? Think yeah. That's what the article said. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing that we could create something that could fly through space for that many years. And slingshot, gravity slingshot around planets to pick up speed to go out of the solar system. What a legend. <laughs> Although it'll be really wild if we, you know, improve our space travel. We may be able to just go pick it up in like 100 years. Meanwhile, all these years later, we got a dumb overturned moon lander yeah <laughs> can't do anything just well, that was a miss sort because it's not the next story well it's the space section chris that we're still in the ai section actually you're right that was a miss that was a miss sort yeah because now we're no you know what we're in the actual robot section oh, okay. uh, so okay. i would count voyager as a robot would you not yeah maybe not as advanced as these guys who are back well i guess they never went anywhere but they're taking the cruise's place and they're getting it done Waymo launches driverless rides for employees in Austin. Is this like a way of keeping lawsuits out of court? Because it's like, well, it was just our employees. That's free testing. Yeah. What are they going to do? Say no and then get <laughs> fired in this job market? And this was an update. Unfortunately, we thought we had a lead on who burned that Waymo in the uh, Super Bowl celebration. Remember that? Mm. Turns out that's not the case. It's another attacker and he's not really attacking Waymo's. San Francisco police make an arrest in the Tesla fires, but not the Waymo arson. So someone was trying to burn Teslas in mm. San Francisco. It's somebody who just found out that Elon Musk got his wife pregnant. And uh, <laughs> if you see a car, apparently in Los Angeles, if you see a car that's running and there's no one in it, you have to steal it. <laughs> just as part of being someone who lives in Los Angeles. But watch out if it has a bunch of sensors all over it. Unhoused man accused of trying to steal a Waymo self-driving car in downtown L.A. This did not end well. He jumped in the car and they have a speaker in there and it's being monitored at all times. And they're like, sir, please exit the car. He refused to do so, but he couldn't make it do anything. And then the cops just came and collected him. It's weird that he stuck around. You got to think like, what was the response time? Yeah. Here? This is the one I'm thinking of. Sad. It's sad. Japan's slim moon lander powers down as the long lunar night falls. The again. probability of failure will increase. So we made it through the first night. They weren't sure about that. But he didn't really have any power because he's upside down. He didn't get a lot of power. He's struggling to try to do some of his tasks. And there was maybe a little bit of success there, but... Probably not going to wake up. Sad. I was going to say same, and then I was like, oh, that would be too dark. <laughs> <laughs> but then you said it. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw it out there. Give you guys a little chuckle. Well, China is trying to catch up with what Elon Musk was doing in uh, 2020. Once again, the, China's living in 2020. We're all in 2024. China to de debut large reusable rockets in 2025 and 2026. And there's a little picture of a prototype. Look at that. <clears throat> so this is not the long march rocket this is a new kind of rocket that they're doing and they're they're hoping it works out for them i guess they're gonna have a hard time getting chips for that and mr bezos is out there still launching rockets and he has some aggressive timelines blue origin targets 2025 for cargo landers inaugural moon trip with humans to follow Man, they're going to have to get their rear in gear if they're going to target that, though. They're way behind. The guy they interviewed here, his job title is something like uh, Permanent Moon Habitation Manager. So that's their goal, is to have people on the moon. That's going to be an incredible thing to put on his LinkedIn. Well, that's it, yeah. 
Can you imagine you take a girl out on a date and she's like, oh, what do you do for a living? I'm the permanent moon manager. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> well, technically we don't have anybody habitating on the moon right now. This job title exists is just to trigger Elon Musk so that, <laughs> so that he stumbles as he tries to beat us to the punch. What is your purpose? <laughs> And we do not have people living on the moon, but we do have people living in space, and that their house is getting a little old. It may be time for a remodel, but that's not really an option. Russia acknowledges continuing air leak from its segment of the space station. <laughs> yeah, we see it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, They're looking for it. They don't know exactly where it is, but it's a small leak, so it's probably fine. Now, they claim that's no risk to the crew, but if I think if I was on the crew, I'd be I'd raising be my hand and be nervous. like, are you sure that <laughs> oxygen is not critical for my survival? Because everything I've learned. Is- In astronaut school. <laughs> <laughs> How much do we spend to replace one cubic foot of oxygen on the space station? It's got to be in the millions, right? It's got to be a think. lot. Now, I have a personal crusade. I want to understand more about people who do not have an inner monologue. But I think that's connected to this, which is aphantasia. And there are people among us, and maybe some of you, please say in the comments, who are experiencing life entirely different than I am. And I'm desperate to understand it. I I think I understand like a fraction of what, you know, the great inventors like Copernicus felt. Like I want to know this information so desperately. I can't picture things in my mind. I didn't realize that was unusual. This is a Guardian article about people who just can't picture things in their mind. That is, as someone who's extremely visual, that is is baffling to me. How do you know? Oh, it's a paywall. Oh, paywalled. There's a, uh, is this one of the, oh yeah, I'll do it later. There's, There's a, a test in here. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm for sure level one. Hey, level one. Ah. <laughs> but this guy claims he's... Like, you he's, tell him picture a red star and he just he's can't. He's level six. He can't do any of it. Or no, it's a she. I'm sorry. I think it's a woman, right? Uh, Shayla Love. I don't. This article was disappointing for me because it, does, it doesn't talk about the problems that you have. Because I think visually and more abstractly, and I often have a hard time translating that into language. And that's something I struggle with in video because... I'll be talking about something on video and I will literally use the wrong word for something like five, six times in a row. What's your star level? Oh, I, yeah. Did you I do? mean, it's, I'm, I can visualize it all and like it's not. But I mean, communicating can, it after is, yeah. is a, a different can, skill set. I can see the apple. I can create like condensation running down the apple. Yeah. Like yeah. Video. Yeah. I, I cannot imagine not having it. I read a thread, uh, it was in like a writing subreddit. And someone was saying, like, I hate it when I read a book that has a ton of, like, descriptions about stuff like the environment because I can't picture it. No, I read it somewhere else. I mean, that was literally in this one. In this too, yeah. That's bizarre, though. Like, I can't. That's one of the my favorite parts of reading a book is reading like the descriptions and getting like a mental picture of like the place. One, one of the techniques that I use for remembering things is by arranging it spatially inside a place that doesn't exist. See now it's that a palace. that you're sounding more like these people when you say that because they claim that everything that they do is spatial has to do with that. I think that the spatial is a fallback mechanism though because it is so primal. It is a part of your brain that evolution has conserved because you die if you don't have it. Like you get eaten by a predator or something catastrophically bad happens. They, they do those fMRIs of like the New York City cab drivers, and it's like, oh, this tiny little part of your brain has a ton more density and neurons than most everybody else's brain. But I think you can exploit that for memory and storage and all kinds of things. Well, exploitation is the name of the game in modern Hollywood. And good news, they're going to take our memories and rape them further with three more. <laughs> The Mandalorian and Grogu gets intriguing working title, a rumored Ray Skywalker movie, title debunked. All that to say, three more hot piles of trash <laughs> are going to be shoveled into theaters from the Star Wars franchise. Prepare yourself. And prepare yourself for this. I will watch this. I'm ashamed to say <laughs> on some level, but this does seem entertaining. Boxing legend Mike Tyson to face off in J- against Jake Paul in July bout. I plan to finish him. It was ambiguous who I referred to. That's Mike. Hmm. Mike's saying that. <laughs> it's, He's it's, like it's more, but you're not really capturing the sexual energy of it. 58 years old. And I got to think that the odds are with him, right? I don't know. That's something to look forward to, though, right? Whenever mm-hmm. I ask, next time I ask on stream, 
What are you looking forward to? You can. <laughs> My test. I'm not looking forward to it that much. Unfortunately, it will be a Netflix exclusive. Oh, yeah. So that means you totally can't find it elsewhere. Oh, right. Yeah. No one will have a copy of it. And our athletes are people that a lot of kids look up to. I don't know how much how true that is anymore. Maybe the modern kids don't care, but uh, they have some interesting beliefs sometimes. We've 2024 NFL com- Combine. Is that how you say that? Yeah. Uh, Texas Tech's Tyler Owens says that he doesn't believe in space and other planets. Well, they don't hire these football players for their minds. So. Well, well, but isn't he in college? Like, it seems like space and planet. NFL's that, not college, right? The combine means he's coming into the NFL for the first time. Uh, so he's had some college. Oh. Probably. Did he pass? I didn't cover his I don't history. believe in planets. What a weird... But uh, you can see some of them. It would, you can see space it, at night. It would be neat if that decomposes into well, we're on the holodeck, and it's like when you throw a holographic rock at the holographic yeah, he, holodeck wall, and it goes from a real rock to a hol- holographic. Yeah, rock. I hope he like doubles down and gets even weirder with it. Like, <laughs> not that he just doesn't believe in, but he has some kind of other crazy belief system. He was non-committal, but he was he was on the fence in terms of flat Earth. Mm. He didn't believe it or disbelieve it. Deeply disturbing. Now, if you're wondering why the NFL would hire somebody who's clearly you know operating on this level uh they point out that during the game that they were like watching him see how he would do he hit 21 miles per hour running he he can throw a ball so well that's what matters he's not a quarterback whatever he's a safety (laughs) he does the ball very well he's very fast Mm -hmm. i didn't understand this article at all Okay, well, so do you remember the fire festival? Yeah, right. yeah. they're going to do it again. Well, but okay, go ahead. All right, so the fire festival was a criminal act. Basically, they stranded a bunch of stupid young people on an island and starved them, and you know, gave them dysentery. They're deciding to do it again, but that's not enough because they've identified identified other people who did the same stupid thing, and they're like, "Hey, you should come and be a part of this." <laughs> Wonka team needs to make amends at Fire Festival too. So, okay, that's the part—the part where this article stopped making any sense. I mean, it didn't make any sense the whole the whole way through here. But you, the Wonka Festival—if you didn't hear it, you got to check out. We did it last week. We talked about it. The unknown. This article says that they've already collected a hundred over a hundred million dollars for Fire Festival two. Is that right? That can't no. be right. One thing that you have to remember here, I think, that's important is this man is a liar. Oh, okay. He lied about the entire first <laughs> festival. Like the Wonka thing. But things. this time it's going to be great. <laughs> I mean, that is kind of a valid business model. It, I mean, Just lie. Most businesses, I mean, yeah, like full self-driving. It's going to be here next year. I mean, you know, it's just, we've been hearing that for, what, a decade at this point? And then you look, it's like, it's no wonder that no one trusts anything. We literally have society breaking down around us because... No one trusts anything, and there's no consequences. No one trusts anything because there is no consequences from just this. Well, there's one thing that does have consequences, and that is <laughs> all of our food being horrible, manufactured, artificial garbage. Isn't that the same kind of thing? Like, you lose trust, and it's like, am I going to be able to buy food that is reasonably priced and reasonably healthy? And the answer is no. Pick, pick one. Even then. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you're doing the whole vegan thing, which... It's hard. Our whole life, we've been taught, like, oh, this is super healthy. It's basically unavoidable to have polyunsaturated fats. Yeah, you're going to have it, and it's still not better. You're suffering, but you're not really gaining anything. Yeah. And it turns out, this used to be a problem that only affected us and a couple of other countries, but now it's everybody. Worldwide, obesity tops 1 billion people, with a heavy prevalence in the U.S., probably because our diet sucks. And it's hard to eat right. It really it is. It really is. It's inconvenient to eat right. That's the thing. Yeah. Well, and if you have people working two, three jobs, when do you have the chance to cook? Well, I bet this guy was too busy to cook. This is I amazing. saw this story and was like, I don't, but but why? <laughs> the, I, I linked the paper earlier in the week that like there's an actual academic paper that this is, which is amazing. But here's the thing. Well, let's do the headline first. The Ars Technica headline is German man got 217 shots. For the thing over a period of 29 months. Here's how it went. So I don't know what it was like in Germany. But I know here we had total like surveillance tracking. They spent so much time trying to figure out who wasn't getting these shots. 
but apparently zero oversight for someone who tried to get more than one. Now, admittedly, it is insane to try to get there more than a, one. There was a YouTube skit that released when the these all first came out, and it was a guy who was like, I've gotten all five vaccines, and it's like he had superpowers, and like someone actually, reality is stranger than comedy now. Now, the thing that nobody has answered, and they always preface it in here, that's like, a man who has done this for his own reasons, <laughs> what, but, what but are why they? did he do it? The, uh, the academic paper said that this was like there was a prosecutor who had did not prosecute him because he <laughs> agreed to be part of a study. The good news is they didn't find anything significantly wrong with him because it's illegal to fake that. Yeah, and he had to fake it in order to keep getting more. But maybe nothing wrong with him physically, but I, mentally <laughs> perhaps. Well, it didn't destroy his immune system. His uh-huh. immune system still functions like it should. It uh, it has an overdeveloped response to the spike protein, which I, I guess is good. But it is not significantly like his immune response was not like dramatically better than the control. So it didn't do anything weird, but it also didn't help. You know, really, it didn't really help. Yeah. Couldn't we also use that argument to say that that particular shot? Didn't really do much of anything. (laughs) It did something. Just don't know if it's enough. Well, one drug that we are sure does something is fentanyl. It's very effective. It affects you almost immediately and has a really, really, really powerful effect. But you have to give people that actual drug rather than stealing it for that to work. (laughs) Nurse swapped in tap water for fentanyl, killing an Oregon patient, a lawsuit alleges. Everybody that laughs at me for not drinking tap water, the tap water is what had the staph virus that killed him. Yeah, well, now, it was injected directly into his blood. Yeah, yeah. I mean, are you injecting Nestle water? <laughs> no, but I'm saying if there's stuff in there, reverse osmosis that out of there. I don't want it. Give me the pure water. But yeah, I mean, your stomach acid would probably solve that problem. But still, it shows you that tap water is some nasty stuff. So this gal... It does taste bad. Uh, this guy fell off a ladder at 65 and banged himself up pretty bad but they're like oh he's he's gonna survive this but he's in a lot of pain so let's give him the fentanyl and the woman who's giving them the fentanyl was like i would like this fentanyl for myself so she emptied it out filled it up with tap water popped it up there. and then she went on to her second job at tiktok <laughs> <laughs> yeah not fabulous the, the tiktok tip on how to make extra money it's uh-huh. not on tiktok it's on the streets and uh, when it comes to shoplifting, one of the things about it is like you need to target things that are easy to steal but have a high value and easy resale, right? This guy was a genius for what he was picking, but I wonder how he was, like, who was he selling it to? I guess just college students. Right? Yeah, so eBay. The, some of those calculators are expensive. Wisconsin man arrested for allegedly stealing over $90,000 in calculators from Target stores across the U.S. He was still on them 10, 20 at a time. Graphing calculators, too. That yeah. wasn't the cheap shit. It wasn't even a lot of calculators. They're just super expensive. So this guy, they found all the calculators in his car and he still had the receipts for uh, some other transactions he had made at these various stores. He was shopping while he was doing this. So they pretty much got him dead to rights. Can't you emulate graphing calculators on modern mobile phones? Probably, mm-hmm. but when I was in school, like they had a... There was a giant sleeve on the back of the door with all the calculators, and like each person at the beginning of the semester had one assigned to them, but you couldn't take it out of the classroom because they were too expensive. Oh, we had to buy ours. No, we didn't have to buy any. That but was... you couldn't. You had to use them in class. You couldn't take them home. And I've been following this young lady, uh, Tiffany Hen- Henyard. She is a mayor in uh, an Atlanta suburb, I think, or maybe it's Chicago. Don't no, I think it's Atlanta, and. Uh, she is just a wild card, man, and she doesn't care, and you can't stop her. And apparently, the laws are set up in such a way that it's okay. Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard vetoes investigation into herself amid corruption accusations. Mm, that seems like corruption. <laughs> <laughs> so they Weird had a, how that happens. They had a vote, and they're like, "We need to look into the finances." She vetoed that vote, and then the next day, they had a public meeting where people could come and like air their grievances and everybody was like we need to look at the finances so she ruled that in the next meeting we won't talk about this (laughs) can they not override her like that's usually how that works a two-thirds majority yeah (laughs) apparently not that's the small town corruption i was talking about and so is this a woman wins a 3.8 million dollar verdict after swat team searches the wrong home based on find my iphone app this is 
this this uh, this article has some twists and turns. So yeah, there's there's a lady. They used a battering ram on her house. Even line. though she told them how to open the door. Yeah. And, well, they paid a lot of money for that batting ram. And they did a lot of bad stuff in her garage, even though she was like, you don't have to break down the door. Like, you can just go in, you can look around. They had the, the find my iPhone was just the rough general area, and they got a warrant without specifying that. So the, the phone was in the area, but the SWAT team didn't have to destroy her property. Like, she was cooperating. She's like, oh... Says there's a stolen phone here. Great, look around. But they were kind of, kind of bad. It's like when we play Ready or Not. Yeah. And we're just like, okay, they're they're on their knees, and then whoops, oh, I've shot them. <laughs> I like how you're so surprised by that. <laughs> so I, I feel like that this wouldn't have been a three point eight million dollar thing if they had just not broken the lady's door down and just. I was like, oh. Yeah, but they got suited up and they rode in. They're on all the, excited. The armored vehicle. I'm not super offended that. They were able to get a warrant based on, like, this is the most probable location based on it being in this general area. It's not here. But don't get out the battering ram. Come on. And here not it interesting that in some parts of our country we have police gone wild like that with no accountability. None of those guys are going to lose their jobs. That $3.8 million is coming out of taxpayer dollars. Which is sad. So there's no punishment. And then on another side of the country... We have the exact opposite of Bill, just insanity. Bill heading to Oregon Governor Kodak's desk to ban drug use on public transit. Because apparently that's not already illegal. <laughs> You'd think it'd just kind of be common sense. Just common courtesy. Maybe save your meth for when you're at home. How uncomfortable is it if you're on the bus, you know, you're going to work and somebody sits down behind you and just starts like tapping a vein. And like, <laughs> uh, sir, you can't do that here. There's crazy, no law. Crazy weather we're having, huh? <laughs> And when you get to the justice system, it's also horribly corrupt and broken. <laughs> this is the conclusion to something that we reported on a while ago. An Oklahoma judge who sent more than 500 text messages during a murder trial resigns. Yeah, so the text messages I'm sending sometimes during the news are because somebody's asking me a question about my mom who's struggling. Yeah, well, also, no one's life is on the line here. Right, uh, yeah. And, uh, Moms. <laughs> well, yeah. like, like, so can, more reason for you to text. Like. Yeah, it's like, can she have this kind of stuff? No, that makes her sick. Don't do that. I, I guess I knew this on some level, but I didn't really think about it that much that opiates make you want sweets. Yeah. Really, really badly. Yeah. Which is leading to this in San Francisco. Fentanyl users steal ice cream daily, the store says. They even have a favorite flavor. Maybe they're all pregnant with young girls. Yeah, they also tend to set up camp in, underneath wooden stairs and alley. It's really bad. So they have two favorite flavors and they both have great names. Chocolate gooey brownie, which sounds amazing. That does sound amazing. Or salted malted chocolate chip cookie dough. Stealing five to ten containers a day wow from one store because law enforcement is apparently not effective at stopping that in san francisco at 13 dollars a pint yeah that's the crime well it's, it's california their stuff's all expensive i mean here that would be akin to horse rustling which is you know like deadly force is kind of allowed when you're horse rustling somebody i didn't know the uh, like opioids made you want sweets yeah. that's so interesting yeah. Wonder why that? Why you crave it? Well, like what mechanism triggers that? I bet there's a lot of ex opioid abusers or current ones. In the well, who comments. could tell us? Who yeah, can explain that to you. Yeah. Was it just because of the energy deficit? Like you just you use so much energy. It probably has to do with the receptors, right? Mm. Like certain receptors get blocked and triggered, and then. So there was always like a an old wives' tale that like if you're pregnant, if you crave sweets, you're having a little girl. That was one that my family always had. I don't think there is either, but that was always what was told to me. And if you wanted like salty kind of stuff, you're having a boy. You think women have ever lied to try to, or like change their diet to try to try to like trigger that? Yeah, I don't know. I really want ice cream, but I'm going to eat this beef jerky instead because it'll be different. Yeah. Well, uh, there is no punishment for these kinds of crimes, whether the police do them or whether the fentanyl addicts do them. But there is one time when they will throw the absolute book at you, and that's when you embarrass authority. Annapolis woman charged with a felony and held without bond after sleeping overnight at City Hall and eating Hot Pockets. This wasn't a vagrant or a homeless lady. It was just somebody having some kind of a crisis. She has she she lives somewhere. She was just having problems. This just sounds like something stupid I would do and then get in trouble. <laughs> So she was like camping outside the building and someone came in after hours and she just followed them in. 
to get past the lock. And she slept there and she ate some Hot Pockets. They valued the Hot Pockets at $4.49 mm. and they charged her with felonies. Now, the, the article does correctly point out that in order for it to be a felony, it hinges on intent. And I think she's going to, she's got just even, even the most, most remedial public defender should be able to, to not have it be a felony because come on. Except that public defender is so overworked that they're not even going to get a chance to look at this case. There was definitely a time in my life where I was so, so socially awkward. Like if I was in an office like that at the end of the day and I just got trapped in a conference room, I wouldn't. I would just be like, well, I guess. This I guess is my I'm life sleeping now. here. Yeah. <laughs> would you eat the hot pockets? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because you got to eat something. <sighs> well, uh, you know, we talk about our education system and everything and being so broken down, but again, it can always be worse, and in some parts of the world, it is. Bangladesh teachers suspended after allegedly shooting a student in the exam. Like, I don't even. This this sounds like it would be a Saturday Night Live skit. He kneecapped a student that was. <laughs> Causing a disruption or asked a dumb question or something? It was just like, no, I'm not having this. And it, they suspected that it would have gone up the femur and maybe killed oh. him. He might have bled out, but it hit his phone. Whew. But the best part about this was not that. It was uh, what they found on this guy. <laughs> a, a number oh, of firearms yeah. and quite a number of knives. 81 rounds, uh, 10 daggers, and two firearms. Well, he studied the blade. <laughs> The students like wrestled him down and locked him in a closet till the cops got there. Is that like throwing daggers because you have that many of them? Like, <laughs> throwing stars. <laughs> a, the difference between a dagger and a knife is two, double sides on the blade, right? I think so. Or is it a length thing? Know. Dagger experts, please step in. And uh, maybe the best training for our young students is. Uh, simulated combat because it seems like this is the world they're going to be going into right so get them ready for it british columbia i think teachers suspended for allowing students to hit each other with pool noodles it was all fun and games until somebody hit somebody in the face with a pool noodle which was disallowed and they also wore glasses which broke this is like this was a tuesday when i was going to school like, <laughs> yeah Oh, I took a lot of balls to the face. Yeah. <laughs> and PE and stuff like that. There was always a lot of like, my glasses, my glasses too. Yeah. But I mean, that was just, that was yeah. part of growing up as a kid with glasses. Yeah. In dodgeball, it was literally aim for the face. I remember we were doing uh, volleyball in school and I was serving and I just like served it poorly and I hit the girl in front of me, but in the side of her head and her earring, Ooh. like jabbed her and everybody was just like hey you shouldn't be wearing earrings at PE <laughs> that's, that's your fault that's on you <laughs> I mean I was apologetic but yeah. there was no Sorry. consequence I didn't do it maliciously it's PE is how I broke most of my fingers no everybody just repeat that Ryan, Ryan hits people maliciously with their earrings <laughs> and we've talked about this guy before he broke a record and everybody thought like okay he's got the record he's going to stop this insane behavior but it seems that nothing will stop him and now that he's 70 why should he let it <laughs> just ride this all the way out, man. U.S. man extends his record for most Big Macs eaten in a lifetime to over 34,000. It's expensive right now, too. We were just talking about that. Yeah, he did drop down from nine Big Macs a day to just two. No fries or sides or anything else. He also walks six miles a day, which I have a feeling probably helps him. But think about this. He does not go to McDonald's every day. He buys six or seven Big Macs at a time and keeps them in the fridge at home. Mm. Well, they do Cold keep McDonald's forever. isn't great. Yeah, they never rot, so I guess. Uh, he the, the great thing about it is people are like, are you getting tired of Big Macs? And he's like, you know, not at all. And a lot of people who see me eat one comment that it looks like I'm eating it for the first time. Like, that's the level of joy. <laughs> this man needs to be a long-distance hiker. Like, because he, if he just likes to walk and eat garbage, like, that's like his life. He also needs to be subsidized by McDonald's. They should have a medical team. Like <laughs> looking at what's at wrong with him. Yeah. No, not what's wrong. Just like trying to keep him alive. Because as long as he stays alive, this is a good PR story for them, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, you can eat McDonald's every day. There's no problem. <laughs> Never mind that the man is literally walking miles and miles every day. And uh, one of the things that we hear about a lot in some of these crazy stories is how much people are able are willing to tolerate just not getting paid. <laughs> like they'll just stop paying you, and people keep showing up to work. I don't understand it. Workers asked about pay. And then the reprisal uh, allegedly began with a pig's head left at a workstation. Because it's a pork manufacturing place. Mm. Yeah. So this was like meat processing, which is apparently, you know, everybody thinks they're in Slaughterhouse-Five in those. Uh, 
They owed five workers, of which this person was one of them, $40,000. That's a lot. I'd be a little angry too. You're not allowed to be. But also, like, meat <laughs> they'll, pro- they'll have the AI thing track you. <laughs> the meat processing stuff is brutal. Did you ever read people, The Jungle? I think yeah. these people were desk people, though. I think they were working in, like, the logistics part of it. But still, yeah. I'm sure there's some people processing the meat who aren't getting paid as well. Probably illegals. And the Iditarod is a big snow, uh, what do you call it? Dog sled? Yeah. Like, didn't Balto run the Iditarod? Is it fictional? No, I think that's real. Oh, it's like that? the there's a movie that is very fictionalized, but it was based on a real dog. It's a brutal, brutal race, and weird things can happen, and you have to react to them, but they have some specific rules. Iditarod issues a time penalty to CV for not properly gutting the moose that he accidentally killed on the trail. Or deliberately. So, I don't know if I agree with this one. Of course, I don't really understand the scene. The moose crashed into the dogs. One of the dogs had to be airlifted out. Mm. This guy shot it in the head with a pistol and did like a kind of a half-assed gut on it. Because I guess he knew that was part of the rules. And they were like, no, it wasn't properly gutted. So, now he gets two hours added onto his total time. That's disappointing. I don't know. I think that's kind of fair. All right. Why would you have to gut the moose? Why is that a rule? I assume it's so you're not wasting stuff also if it's on a like a set route maybe it's like that could be considered distracting to other dogs if there's a bunch of meat lying on the side of the road they did come and get the moose and process it yeah They're like nothing's going to waste here in the frozen tundra maybe that's why because uh-huh. it won't rot without the yeah, probably part of it's like don't be wasteful but also like you're distracting the other working dogs uh i want to make sure we got our desktop audio turned down yeah we did because th- you have to see the video for this one. <laughs> stampede of kangaroos invades melbourne golf course aren't kangaroos really mean to yes how many there are of them that's like that scene for uh the gallimimus in jurassic park <laughs> 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 And then a T-Rex crashes out of the trees to chase him. He makes a comment in the video. He's like, they better not step on my golf ball. And I'm thinking like, bro, what are you going to do if they... Are you going to go over there and punch it? Because it'll yeah. mess you up. One kangaroo would probably take you down. There's at least a hundred there. I wonder what makes them stampede. There's a T-Rex back there and you just don't see it yet. Maybe they heard there's like some good coupons. The Dollar General coupon, yeah. <laughs> I was disappointed to learn that this is basically standard operating procedure and has been happening since time immemorial. And this is one of those things where the only thing that has to happen for this to stop is for people to stop eating songbirds. <laughs> More than 400,000 songbirds killed by organized crime in Cyprus. You'll be good. You'll, you'll be delighted to know that it's down from 900,000 a year oh. in previous years. It's also kind of brutal what they do if they put glue on branches or oh. they prep these nets and then they play songbird sounds with speakers. So that they come over. Yeah, catch them. And I can't remember what they said the name of the food was. It was like pickled songbird or something like that, yeah. right? They had a name for it that was in their language, obviously. <clears throat> it didn't sound delicious. The grasshopper is, patties though? can't get here fast enough. I think I could probably live without it. Oh, look how cute this little <laughs> guy is. Red panda found in luggage at Bangkok Airport. And then this article goes on to describe a huge number of animals that have been found traveling through the uh, the Asian uh, airports surreptitiously. It's not great. He look actually at, had some fentanyl on him. He was trafficking. Look at that <laughs> knife in that picture. Like, they just used that knife to cut that tape. And they didn't know what was in there. They could have Ooh. easily stabbed him. Oh. But, yeah. The pandas are so cute. You mentioned that, okay, snakes, parrots, monitor lizards, 87 animals. How were they dealing with the poop? Just don't. Well, 87 animals over the course of a year is probably not a huge amount of poop. It's more, it's none than zero. (laughs) I have two animals in my house. They create an insane amount of poop. (laughs) Yeah. Also, it wasn't, I mean, not, I'm talking talking about a year. I'm talking about just through the course of the flight and the trip. Yeah, because I mean, that, that red panda's going to poop in that basket. Yeah, so are the lizards. Everybody's pooping. This, I'll put this with last because like, this is adorable in a weird way, but just so hilariously low tech. Grasshopper wears brace to support a floppy neck. So this was a, a grasshopper that molted, and mm. its skin was a little flappy, and it'll its skin will harden over time. But they didn't want it to harden in an incorrect way, 
So they created a splint out of a Q-tip. It looks like a, just a stick with like it other healed. sticks. It's yeah. a stick bug. It healed after a couple of days and they took the splint off. So it's doing fine. It just looks so hilarious. What a wild funny. time for that little grasshopper. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's another shot of it. I wonder how often they change the tape. It only needed to, needed to, it probably didn't at all. It only needed this for a couple of days yeah, until it's new exoskeleton hardened up. Here it is. It's back. Of course, the picture just looks like a branch. Amazing what nature can do with camouflage. Oh, wait. Was that not the last story? I think there's one more. What did like. I sort yeah, after one. this one? Oh, right. So, <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> we know that the whales have turned on us, right? They, they keep destroying yachts, but it turns out we're not the only one that the whales have turned on. Killer whale versus shark. Solo orca eats a great white. We got that on video for the first time. Orcas that's, are brutal. That's apparently hard to do. And uh, the the sharks will swarm and tightly circle because they fear the orca. But the orca is a uh, mighty hunter. And orcas are smart enough to work together because, you know, they're they're high functioning. You ever see it where they will be on both sides of the, the ice flow and the little seal is oh, trapped between Oh, that's terrible. Them? Yeah. So they'll do that to the sharks as well. But this one was like, he didn't have a buddy. He didn't even care. He soloed a shark. Also, Which, some people were kind of worried. That's like, normally you wouldn't think that they would do that because that's like a, a lot of effort to expend to get some prey. And it's like, does that mean there's not enough fish? But here's the reason why. They tell you. Sharks, I can't remember what the number was. I think it was like 40%. 40% of a shark's body is liver. Oh, And the orcas delicious. love shark liver. So they don't eat the whole shark. They kill it, and they rip the liver liver out, and they just snack on that, and they leave the rest. They're of really the just like cats, aren't they? So what we need is a sequel to the movie Sharknado, where they weaponize an orca somehow, and then they have Orcanado. Oh, and it, it, it could ideas. breathe outside the water too, yeah. as uh. long as the Orcanado was keeping it moist. <laughs> I think that AI can bring my vision to life. Tough day. He was a younger shark. He was a juvenile shark. They, but he was a great a white. A baby shark, if you will. Well, no, they, <laughs> they suspect that a full-size shark may have had a chance there, but the orcas are clearly getting more powerful. Neat. That's a, a terrifying thing to end your week to contemplate. It's coming for your liver. But that's it. That's it for this week. We'll be back next week with more stories to share with your friends. Please tell your friends about this show. Bye!